Good morning. I am filming you with my GoPro. You're going to get a face shot for a second. Okay. I just had to make sure it's filming. See, that's one of the great things about this GoPro is that it has a little screen in the front. I can see the timer going and it's recording and it beeps. So I know that it's starting and then when I press it again to stop the video, it beeps again. So I know it's stopping. All things I explained in a previous video about why I didn't like that Ape Man. This is the Ape Man case I think I showed you guys before. It has all the attachments in it, all the mounts, all that stuff. And really nice case, which I think now I'm going to use it for the GoPro. Um, but anyway, so now I have the GoPro back and I'm super, super happy to have it back. It is Friday morning and I have, do, 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 there's the list, 13 properties to do today, which doesn't sound like a lot, but one, two, three, four, six of them. Six of them are big, big, big properties. So it's going to be a pretty long day. It is like 49 degrees outside right now. It's supposed to get up to 77 degrees. We'll see what happens. Um, my hand's a little swelled up right here. I was weed whacking along. There's these rocks that are about that big. They outline this flower bed. And there's these big evergreen bushes on the other side of the rocks. And apparently there was a wasp nest in between the rocks and the evergreen bushes. And they came out of there and they were pissed. And it got me once, right on my knuckle, which I've tried all kinds of stuff and still haven't gotten that stinger to come out yet. It itches like crazy. But I've taken some Benadryl and gotten the swelling to go down. So, yeah. So I hose that. I ran back to my trailer and got the last two cans of wasp spray that I had. And I sprayed it in there like crazy. And they were coming out in the hundreds, just dying, just dropping right off. So. Um, even after the second can, there were still more coming out. There had to be so many in there. But anyway, so I went up and I got more wasp spray. I'll show you guys in this video at some point today. Um, I'll show you the wasp spray that I use. It's good stuff. I, I sprayed bees in midair and they just drop straight down. <clears throat> and uh, it's nothing too extraordinary. I buy it from Home Depot. It's like three forty-seven a can. I always try to keep three or four cans of it on the shelf in the trailer. You never know, never know when you're going to need that stuff. Um, but uh, but yeah, so I'll show you guys that. Um, so much to do this weekend. So much to do. It's getting cooler. Usually I mow right up until the week of Thanksgiving in November. Um, it's only, well, what is today? Today is... September 16th, Friday, September 16th. I have a very strong feeling that we are going to be done mowing by the end of October. And it's already getting a lot cooler than it normally does. Um, I just have a feeling it's going to be done. They claim there's like 10 different weather forecasters that all claim that we're going to get pounded with snow up here in the northeast this winter. That November, January and February are going to be well above snow averages. December, we're going to have a good amount of snow. And March, we're going to have a good amount of snow. So, they claimed that last year too, and we barely got anything. Um, but this year, it's been so hot and so dry that we've we had that long, like, nine and a half week drought. Um, up here in the northeast, we always get our precipitation. It doesn't matter if it comes in rain, snow, sleet, hail, I don't care what. We make up for it somewhere. So we have the, we definitely have the makings for a bad winter this year because any time where it's really hot and really dry during the summer, we usually end up with a pretty heavy winter. So I don't know, they may just be right. They may be on point this year. Um, so I got to get my mowing done today, this weekend. I need to get, I think I quickly showed you guys that roller that I bought for lawn rolling. Um, it's a, well, it's 
I think it's made by Rollomatic, but it's the same thing as a Brutus roller if you look it up. Um, and I got a great deal on that. I'm pretty sure I showed you all that in another video, but I have to get the engine and the gearbox pulled off of it so that I can paint it real quick because um, it needs painted bad. And then uh, let that dry up and then put the engine and the gearbox back on, which is only four bolts to pull each one off. They come off super simple. It's not even like pulling an engine off a mower, which isn't that hard either, but it, it's very, very simple. I'm going to pull them off, paint them up real quick, or paint the, uh, the roller up real quick, and then put, put the engine and the gearbox back on it, put the new uh, Lovejoy connector, which is the connection that connects the two of them together. I'll, I'll show you all that in another video. I think I've showed you that already. But anyway, I'll uh, put those together, put it back on, um, put the new hand grips on it that I bought for it, Put the new seat on it I got for it. Get all that together and then get that out of my front garage and put out back so that I can pull my plow out, which is tucked in the back corner of my front garage. Um, and go through the plow, make sure the plow's all ready to go for the winter. Um, and then I still got to get the GMC, the truck that I plow with. I got to get that put up on the lift this weekend um, because there's a clunking in the front end. I think all it is is a bearing. It's either a bearing or a universal joint I'm pretty sure it's one of the two so get that taken care of before the snow starts flying and then that'll be good to go um, I've already gone through all my light bars and everything make sure they're all still coming on working the way they should be and everything is so I need to get all that done um, the land that I hunt on I need to, I guess the guy that owns the land, which is our town judge, he has a, uh, he's letting another guy hunt there this year as well. He is a border patrol agent. So the judge wants me to come and get his Kubota UTV, take this border patrol agent out, show him where I hunt, where my stand is, um, so that the guy won't be in my way. He won't go anywhere near where I'm at. And I need to set my trail cam up to see what's going on around the area right now um, before bow season starts. So I need to do that this weekend, but that's more of a scheduled time. That's at Sunday around 5.30 in the afternoon. I got to do that. So at least I have some stability in that schedule for the weekend. But yeah, so that's what I got going on. It's pretty hectic, pretty busy right now. And for the next three days, I'm going to be go, 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 rushing like crazy. It's supposed to get up to 77 degrees today. The sun is out pretty bright right now. No rain in the forecast right now a little bit of rain over the weekend we'll see what happens uh, I'm gonna show you guys some stuff with the skag I talked to Johnny from Johnny Mo a little bit about it last night he's uh he's the go-to guy if you have mower issues anything going on with mowers any, any questions about certain mowers the docks the way they perform what does what Johnny just has so many years in the business with trial and error that he just, he knows his shit. And uh, he can give you a lot of valuable input. If you guys, uh, I'm sure everybody knows who he is. But if you don't, check out Johnny Moe's. And uh, he's, he's pretty easy to get a hold of if you got questions. And he's more than willing to help you out. But anyway, the, the issue I had with the skag, with the tires and the pressure in the tires and the deck not being level, I've never in my life, never had such an issue trying to level a deck and it was just a nightmare I was working on this thing for like two and a half hours I could not get it where I wanted it and when I did get it where I wanted it then when I pressed the foot pedal to bring the deck up to lock up in transport mode it wouldn't come up and stay up in transport mode it, it was just such a pain in the ass so I ended up calling the dealer and I said I'm bringing this to you let you guys level it and they said no problem so I took it to them and I grabbed that right that I was demoing. I grabbed that back and used that for the rest of the day. He texted me by that night. He said, I'll be here at 7.30 tomorrow morning. You want to come get your mower back? I leveled it. So what I guess what he did is he just loosened up the rods on the side. He loosened up all the connections so that all the chains were dangling loose. And he has three-inch blocks. And he put them up under the spindle bolts. And he set the deck right down on it. And then he tightened everything up so that there were tension on all the chains. And then he set the pin for the height where I wanted it and then he just adjusted um, the adjuster that's on the foot pedal to 
bring it that little bit more to get it so it was spot on. I guess he did it in no time. He did it pretty quick. Uh, I followed the manual exactly how it said to do it, and it just was not happening at all. I just could not get it. And uh, I'm very mechanically inclined, as you guys, you know, if you go back to my videos and look at the stuff that I build, the stuff that I create, the stuff that I fix, I mean, you guys will see that I am very mechanically inclined, and I can usually always figure this stuff out. Um, I, I don't know what the issue was there, but... Um, so it, it ended up being a serious pain, but like I'd mentioned in my last video, the tire pressures were way off according to what the manual says they should be. So when I brought them down to where they needed to be according to the manual, it everything was, you know, that's when the deck was more off than it was before that. Um, but like Johnny had mentioned to me, he goes, the reason they had them tires aired up like that probably is because, you know, I ordered it with the bagging system and with all the weight of the bagging system, it will squat them tires even more and then really throw off the height that I'm cutting at as per where I have the pin set. So I'm hoping that's not going to become a major issue. I'm hoping maybe I can find a happy medium. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my gauge under there that I use for measuring the deck, which I've showed in past videos again. Um, and I'm going to see exactly where the deck is to make sure it's right where it should be, which I believe it is. I haven't touched it since they said it. Um, and then I'm going to put the bagging system on. And I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to take another measurement to see if it changed at all. Then I'm going to mow my yard and let them baggers fill right up. And then I'm going to take another measurement again and I'm going to see where it's at. And I want to see just how much it's actually changing the height of that deck. So, I mean, because the last thing I want to do is, you know, I really only bag in spring and fall. But the last thing I want to do is have to keep re-leveling that deck so that's where I want it. But at the same time, I don't want them tires filled up that high pressure so that I have that bumpy ass ride. That thing should ride pretty smooth, you know. I mean, my yards, I have bumpy yards. It's just the nature of the business. I, you know, not all my yards, not even half my yards are really smooth. So um, I'd like to have as smooth of a ride as I can get which was one of the whole reasons I went with the Tiger Cat. I was going to buy the Patriot. Um, it's the reason I went with the Tiger Cat, because it has that spring tension seat um, to make it a lot more comfortable. But, I don't know. It's going to be a lot, of, uh, a lot of playing around, a lot of this and that, back and forth, to find out what's going on and where exactly everything is riding at. But, I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out. That's the name of the game in any business, you know, but definitely in our business with uh, lawn care, you know, everything's trial and error. You have to, you have to play around back and forth. And that's exactly what I was referring to when I mentioned Johnny from Johnny Moe's is, you know, trial and error. The guy's had so many years of experience. I've been in this industry for a little over 17 years, but only, this is only my fourth season running my own business. Prior to this, you know, I worked for all these other companies and, you know, they pretty much did all the maintenance. I just got on the equipment and ran it. You know what I mean? So I learned a lot, but you know, they did most of the maintenance. I did a little bit here and there. So um, Johnny has like 20 years of doing it on his own, doing all this stuff. So, you know, he definitely has more experience with that stuff than I do um, in that aspect of it. So, you know, it is what it is and we will see, we will find out what's going on in, uh, We'll go from there, and, uh, you know, I'll film as much of it as I can, and you guys can learn right along with me. But, um, yeah, that, that's about it for right now. That's about what I got, and we will see what else this video is going to have in it as we get through the day here. Um, so, stay with me, guys. Happy to have the GoPro back. Let's have a little rant for a minute. There's nothing more flippant annoying than somebody that takes advantage of you. Let me explain. There's an old saying, it was actually by Al Capone, it said, Don't ever mistake my kindness for weakness, otherwise weakness will be the last thing you remember about me. And that's about the truest statement I've ever heard. 
I am very nice to everybody. Always willing to help people. Always willing to go the extra mile for people, even if it's at my cost. Well, I have this customer that I had my first year in business, then I had my second year in business, and then she sold her house and moved. Now, it was $40 or $45 a week I mowed her lawn for. It's a pretty decent sized yard. Um, she was never really picky. So, when she moved, she moved to the next town over, which is another town that I service, and I started mowing that yard for her. Well, that yard is a lot smaller. And I used to have a minimum of 25. Now my minimum is 30. I've upped it because it is just, you know, it is what it is. You got to make money, right? So, um, so I started mowing this yard for her 25. I did it last year for her. And then I was going to offer to the 30 this year. And I didn't. I kept her 25 because it's just her and her daughter. And she makes very good money. She does make a good living. Um, but she was complaining because of, you know, money. She's broke all the time and this and that. But whatever. She's always super nice to me. Always she's funny. Jokes around me. Laughs at me. Well, so I kept her at the same price just to kind of help her out. And her yard wasn't that big of a deal. Um, just very basic. So... This year, I still had her 25. Well, in her crying all her poor blues, she had a shit ton of landscaping work done to her yard. Didn't have me do it. I had somebody else do it. Spent, oh, look at all them deer running across the road. But anyway, um, so she spent all this money on landscaping, thousands of dollars. Then she spent thousands of dollars to have a brand new deck put on the back of her house. Then she spent even more money to have this company come in and fabricate this awning to go out over her deck with the poles and the canvas and all that stuff. And now she's always telling me, cut it to the dirt, cut it to the dirt. She wants it cut low. And I told her, I said, I only cut so low. I'm not burning out your yard. She goes, I don't mind if it's burned out. And I said, well, I do because then I can't cut it and then I lose money, and what's the point of me keeping you if that's the case? So, um, she's always yelling, cut it to the dirt, but her backyard grows like wildfire. So, you know, it's like six, seven inches tall every week when I go there. She wants to cut down like two inches. And, you know, the lowest I'll go is like two and three quarter. So, I'll cut it down, and then I'll cut it again, and I gotta cut it again. Well, it's all going for the same price, right? The same low price as it is below what I wanted to be at anyway. On top of that, there's always tons of dog shit in her yard. And I've told her a hundred times, pick it off. And she gives me an excuse. Well, it's too tall. I couldn't see it. Well, you know where your dog shits, don't you? I can tell you where your dog shits every week. Because it's always in the same spot. Dogs are creatures of habit. They will shit in the same spot most of the time. So, not only am I dealing with her being a very low price... Not only am I dealing with all the dog shit, the extra work I have to double cut stuff. Now there's a lot more to weed whack around because of all the landscaping that she's had done. And spending thousands of dollars on all this other stuff, but always crying to pour blues to me so that I won't raise her price. And on top of that, she never was before, but this year she's been late every freaking month when I send her her invoice. She's always late on paying it. She always pays it, but she's always late. So all these things combined, and I just got done mowing it. All these things combined, and I'm thinking, what the hell am I even still mowing her yard for? Well, I do one right next door to her, so I park the truck and I hit two. And the other one that I do, I do another property for that lady. So I have multiples for hers. But I'm thinking, I'll just drop her. I'll just drop her. And she's the kind of girl that I can tell will be a bitch. A bitch if I drop her. She'll just like go off. Which I don't even care. That doesn't bother me a bit. Um, but it just irritates the crap out of me. Like how much more blatantly obvious can it get that you are taking advantage of me? 
you know what I mean? And I mentioned something to her before, just joking around the one day. I said, wow, I thought you were so broke. Look at all this work you've done the house. And she goes, oh, she goes, now I'm just far in debt because, you know, that's loans I took out for all that and credit cards and this and that. I'm thinking, why is that my problem? Why is that my problem? You're putting yourself into debt at this point in your life. You should know better. So, I mean, if you don't, I accept credit cards. Put yourself into debt with me and pay your damn bill on time. You know? Or pay the new rate. I don't I don't care. I'll take your credit card all day. I don't care how far in debt it puts you. It's not my problem. It's not my fault. It's not my problem. You know? I don't know if this makes me sound like a dick, but, man, talk about being super nice to people and going the extra mile and trying to help them out. You know, because they're always crying to poor blues to you and then just clearly right in front of your face are just taking advantage of you. It's just so irritating. I just had to get that rain out. It's not going to ruin my day. I'm just going to go out of the day now that I got that rain out. I'm, I'm on the next lawn. So be it. I'll just go on with the rest of my day. But I just want to mention that to you guys. You, you know, do you have customers that do that? Over the years, I've had a couple customers that weren't that obvious that they were taking advantage of me. And I dropped them like they were nothing. So... You know, it's not even a big deal, especially when you're not charging that much for that loan anyway, and you're already losing money on it. Now you're losing even more because you got to double and triple cut it all the time because it grows so fast. And on top of that, you um, you got a lot more to weed whack around. I mean, there's not uh, in her gate to get in her backyard. I got to use a 36 stander. I can't even take the tiger cat in there with the big bagging system and just cut it down low and cut it once. So I don't know. I think she's just put herself on the drop list. If regrets were like raindrops, there'd be a river running through this house. If our love was like a circus, I'd be the sad faced clown Walking with my head down Wondering where you are now
touch on tonight But reality shows about some folks' so-called lives A pretty girl cries cause she don't get a rose But she'll find love next year on her own show And they call that real Real is a hand you hold 57 years Real is a band of gold trembling with fear It's the first long tear down an old man's face Watching his angels slipping away His heart so broke it's never gonna heal Housewives don't act like that And the survivors are farmers in John Deere hats Our amazing race is beating the check Praying that the bank ain't ran it through yet Real like too much rain falling from the sky chance to take to bring us our next meal I call 